Another form of important criteria our mind uses to construct our reality often overlooked these days is the powerful information contained within our dreams. In ancient cultures, dreams were considered to be divinely sent messages, infused with meanings about the future and possessing the power to heal or offer solutions to life's biggest problems. According to spiritual leader Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, who studied all of Patanjali's, which is thousands and thousands of year old text, there are five types of dreams. One, the first type is related to your past experiences and how you release stress. This can be related to where you went to school or college or where you lived or were working at in the past. The second type of dream expresses your innate or latent desires. These dreams can arise anytime there's something that you wanted to do and you weren't able to do it. Instead of actually doing them, you ended up fulfilling your dreams in your dreams. The third type of dream is intuitive. Here, whatever is going to happen in the future, whether it's one month, six months, or a year later, can come to you in this form of a dream. It is said a few months before the tsunami happened, some people actually dreamt of it. The fourth type of dream is about the place you are located. This could be a country you are visiting, or a friend or relative's house you are visiting. For example, if you're in Italy, in the dream you will see Italians, or perhaps speaking Italian. This dream can happen anywhere in the world and is just related to the place you are sleeping and not your own experiences. The fifth type of dream is a mixture of all of these. This type of dream will be a combination of the past and present and the desires and the place you are located. 90% of dreams are this, and that's why there is no clarity. And suddenly you are on a horse, and this horse is inside of a train, and the train is going in this water in a ship, and the ship is going to fly up into the sky, and all sorts of weird things happen like that, right? That's why, as Sri Sri Ravi Shankar said, when people ask him to interpret dreams, he responds, don't worry about dreams, just bundle them up and throw them into the ocean. His point being that 90% of the dreams you have should just be brushed off. As Shankar goes on to explain, the really important part of dream takes place in the very moment that you wake up. Once you are aware that you have had a dream, there's a rush of energy that flows to you and you are fully aware. This alertness hits you and energy wakes you up to reality. In that moment alone, you are fully awake and alive to the truth. Now, when I say most dreams should actually be brushed off, I don't mean just brush them off. I'm talking about the weird, crazy ones can be brushed off. Now, what I'm going to teach you coming up right now is how to actually live your dreams and accomplish things in your dreams so it programs your subconscious to making things happen while you sleep and in your dreams. So your dreams just become a normal part of your life, an extension of your life, as if you're continuing your life when you go to sleep, and then you wake up, and it's continuing that dream into your real life. That is what living your dreams is about. That's why when you wake up, that moment, if that connection is not being transferred over, then you cannot create that. So how do you create in your dreams? So here's a simple yet powerful exercise that will help you harness the power of your intuitive dreams. And the first step in doing this is, of course, being able to recall them. Ask yourself to dream about what you want to create before going to sleep. Bring the image of what you want into your mind's eye and hold it there. And then what you want to do is after awaking from a dream, record them before they fade away from your mind by writing them down in your project book or by using a voice recorder or even the memo feature on your iPhone or something like that. And don't forget to just take what you get. Capture everything you can remember, even fragments of the dream. One thing to also understand is don't overdo alcohol or other sedatives before you go to sleep. They can disrupt your sleep, dull your intuitive senses, and make it harder to remember your dreams. You also want to make sure that you get enough sleep to help you better recall your dreams. And again, be patient. You may not remember your dreams right away, but as you start journaling what you want to dream and picture that in your mind's eye before you go to sleep and write it out before you want to go to sleep, what do you want to dream about? you will start seeing that you actually start dreaming about it. And then when you wake up, you can actually record it. And you'll start seeing that you're shifting time. You're shifting reality because you're doing things in your dreams in real life. It's very hard to explain till you actually get on the other side and achieve this. 
What I want you to do while you're capturing this information is think about the last three dreams you may have had and explore their significance. Look back at the five types of dreams that Sri Sri Ravi Shankar set out and what type of dreams did you have? Were they based on past events, the location you were in, unfulfilled desires, your intuition, or a mixture of all of them? If they were based on an unfulfilled desire, is it tied to what you want to create? If so, were there things that were holding you back or blocking you from achieving it in your dream? And what were they? Or were they intuitive dreams? Ones that felt like they were telling you of events that are about to come. I want you to write down what dreams you felt they were inside of your project book. So, as you continue this process, continue to pay attention to and track your dreams. Dream analysis is not a one-shot deal. This is a continual process and a powerful tool to receive the deeper messages about your life and the things that may be blocking you and creating dis-ease and potentially even a predictor of life events to come. Lastly, let the knowledge of the sleep awaken you. As Shankar says, even if your dreams end up being a conglomeration of images and messages, the kinds that he recommends to kind of you know bundle up and throw in the ocean, take the opportunity to let the knowledge of your sleep awaken you. What reality did your awakening moment bring to you and reveal to you? Before the moment passes, immediately write down all of your thoughts, feelings, and realizations that came to you. I recommend that you keep this project book or a separate dream journal or even a recording device next to your bed so you can capture everything in this moment. You can also use dreams as a continuation of your life like I was mentioning before, where you create what you want in your life by controlling your subconscious dreams. Lucid dreaming is a powerful technique you can use to help you do this. As the Lucidity Institute defines them, lucid dreams are dreams in which you know that you are dreaming while you are still asleep. This fascinating state of consciousness allows you to control your dreams and experience anything imaginable from sublime to impossible. So let's dive right into the process of lucid dreaming with a powerful yet simple exercise called the mnemonic induction of lucid dreams, aka MILD. This exercise was created by Dr. Stephen LeBurge of the Lucidity Institute. LeBurge invented this method when he wanted to have lucid dreams on demand. In essence, the mild technique will train you to increase your self-awareness, making it easier to recognize when you are dreaming. It also involves incubating a lucid dream with affirmations and programming your next dream to contain predetermined dream triggers to bring about lucidity. As you may already know, a mnemonic is any learning device that helps you remember something. These can often be short phrases or acronyms. Here you will be planting an affirmation into your subconscious mind to help you remember your intent to lucid dream and recognize when you're dreaming. The four steps to the mild technique are as follows. 1. Dream recall. 2. Reality checks. 3. Lucid affirmations. 4. Visualize your dream. So step one, dream recall. It's important that you remember and write down at least one dream per day if you have had one. You can revisit the types in the previous dreaming exercise to help you remember your dream. Step two is reality checks. Throughout the day, ask yourself, am I dreaming? And try to distinguish whether you're awake or dreaming with a simple physical action. This can be as simple as looking at the details of your hand or looking at the numbers of a digital clock because numbers are often jumbled to a lucid dreamer, or anything else that gives you a reality check whether you're awake or asleep, and it could be as simple as turning on a light switch. The important thing here is to identify a reality check that has different results depending on whether you are awake or asleep. Then we have step three, lucid affirmations. When you are lying in bed tonight, go through some lucid affirmations in your mind. This is where the term mnemonic induction of lucid dreams mild comes from. Here you are programming affirmations into your memory so you can recall them later while you are dreaming. Repeatedly chant one or more of the following affirmations in your mind. Next time I'm dreaming, I will remember I'm dreaming. The next scene will be a dream. I will have a lucid dream tonight. Or, I'm dreaming now. Chant these affirmations in your mind with some deep feeling. Stay focused and repeat them until you feel like you're about to fall asleep. This can take anywhere from 2 minutes to 10 minutes or longer, depending on your sleeping patterns. Step 4, 
visualize your dream. Once you are deeply relaxed and you feel as though you're about to fall asleep, visualize your dreams. Imagine you are back in a recent dream, but this time you are going to relive it differently. You're going to experience it with ease and live it through the lens of your new desired reality. Visualize everything with as much clarity and detail as you can and then look for a dream sign. This is typically an unusual person, location, or object that tells your mind that what you are experiencing isn't reality. In that moment, you can say to yourself, I'm dreaming. Although at this point you may just be daydreaming, continue to experience an imagined lucid dream fantasy. The more you practice this, the better you'll get at it. Do whatever you would do as if this was a real lucid dream. What would you be doing or creating if this were a lucid dream? You see, during this process, you'll probably fall back to sleep, and that's okay. The purpose of the mild technique is to focus your last thought before you go to sleep on lucid dreaming and what you want to create. If you've done this, then mission accomplished. Each time you successfully do this, you'll have a much greater chance later in the night or the following morning of becoming spontaneously lucid. As you program your subconscious mind, little by little, eventually you will master and use your newfound powers of lucid dreaming to project your new reality into a dream state.